the remnants of Whitebeard's crew led by Marco clashed with Teach's Blackbeard pirates. In the Get the hell out of here. Back like we never left BDA and One Piece 820. The thing that resonated with me when I was reading this chapter that I kept thinking about was One Piece chapters normally leave you with more questions than answers. And I felt like with this chapter, we got a lot of questions, but we also got a lot of answers. Answers to questions that we weren't even asking. We, we we asked those questions, but we weren't asking those questions at the time. Let's just get right into the meat of it. Marco versus Blackbeard. Everyone had the theory that Marco's fruit was going to get taken by Blackbeard because it was the um, the Zoan fruit that would complete that that trifecta that Blackbeard had going on. They felt like that was what Blackbeard needed to really solidify himself as the guy as the Yonko, knowing that the Whitebeard Pirates went up against, um, well, the former Whitebeard Pirates with Marco went up against the Blackbeard Pirates, they had no chance. People are saying that the Whitebeard Pirates are scrubs. If Luffy went up against Kid, or Luffy's crew, the Straw Hat Pirates went up, went up against Kid's crew without Luffy, do you think they would win? No, they're not winning. Whitebeard is gone. Ace is gone, Thatch is gone, and they're going up against Blackbeard, Shiryu, Avalo Pizarro, Vasco Shot, Katarita Devon, um, San Juan Wolf. They're going up against all these guys, and you expect them to win? Marco is powerful, maybe he held his own with Blackbeard, but Vista was not beating Shiryu, or I don't think so. Josie wasn't gonna hang with Avalo Pizarro that long. And the thing is, these guys, the other commanders, I don't even remember their names, but these guys going up against the Blackbeard Pirates and all their forces, come on, man. Like, it was gonna be, uh, it was an overwhelming defeat. And honestly, I'm wondering, like, Marco, what's his thought process right now? Because he got considerably beat down or. Ace got killed in front of his eyes. White Bay got killed in front of his eyes. I wouldn't be surprised if another commander got killed in front of him. And now, maybe Blackbeard kept him alive just to just for him to feel pain. Just for him to feel hurt. Or the fact that he's still alive could be the fact maybe he's immortal. I mean, maybe he can't die. Or I believe Blackbeard would do something like leave him alive and kill everybody else around him. But we don't know. How did this go down? I believe, you know, it's the payback war and all that stuff. And I get it. He wanted to avenge Whitebeard's death, but did you really think he could beat Blackbeard at that point after he had gotten to Guru Guru, to Yami Yami, and really take him down with the remnants? You would need more. You would need to have added Aokiji to the crew, but they got Aokiji. I forgot about Aokiji. They got Aokiji, and the remnants of the Whitebeard parents they had no chance. We don't know if Aokiji, you know, participated in this war. We don't know anything at this point, but all we know is that the the, the former White Bit Pirates went up against the Black Bit Pirates and it was a, a beatdown. So it's, it's a lot of theories going around about Marco and Blackbeard, and I'll touch on those in another video. But for the, the rest of the chapter, they talked about Whitebeard's crew and how Odin was aboard Whitebeard's crew as well. And that's interesting because it seems like Odin was going around different crews to read Poneglyphs, and maybe that was something that was more popular back in the day but now it's only a select few that can read the Poneglyphs but the fact that he is on Whitebeard's crew and Roger's crew that's interesting that's really interesting because now I'm getting the vibe that Whitebeard was to Roger where Law is to Luffy because Law doesn't seem to care too much about being Pirate King and Whitebeard obviously he didn't care because he had essentially everything like they said he knelt at the throne of the pirate king so he had everything he needed he had odin he had the power he had the crew and why didn't he assume the throne he just wanted sons he just wanted a family i'm like were they working together because it's hinted towards the fact that um they arrived on wano together that's what that's what it's hinted towards but we will learn more eventually Another thing was the fact that they said, in Wano, you can't leave the country's borders. And that's crazy. And when you think about past shogunates, it was kind of like a dictatorship where they still had an emperor, but the shogun was actually in charge of the, of the, the country, right? The shogun must have always been this dictator, right? And maybe he didn't make his move until Whitebeard died because that was the only person that could oppose him. So maybe he still had that going on, but after Whitebeard died, he Kaido came in and him and Kaido started working together and then I mean maybe like um, my boy Fruit said before maybe Kaido promised him more power typically people like that once you get power 
what else would you want more than power? More power, right? And I feel like in that case, that could have been something that happened. And they also hints as far as Momonosuke and that he mistook, he, he felt like he saw Roger, but we all know who he saw. These guys are name dropping like hell, like Interaction Neck and this and oh yeah, I saw, uh, we saw Buggy and Shanks, and yeah, oh, Rarely too, oh, Crocus, yeah, we saw all those guys, and, and then they just dropped that we were on Whitebeard ship. Bro, it was also cool how Inarashi kind of broke it down for Nami and also, you know, boosted her confidence and it basically said, you're on the right path. You guys is basically got a shortcut. So just continue on your path and you'll find what's at the end of the tunnel. Don't, don't rush it. You, you'll be fine. Another big part of this chapter was at the end, actually, when Luffy says, what is that? I hear something. And that's obviously Zunisha in pain. And she's going to pass along what she knows to Luffy before she you know, dies or passes away because at this point we know Jack is about to attack and J I'm not sure what Jack is doing to Zunisha to hurt her that much but it must be something pretty crazy because Zunisha was crying like a freaking island the elephant was crying. what I'm thinking that next chapter we're gonna see what's going on with Jack what Jack is doing to Zunisha and Oda has been on fire this year of course a break is happening next week, so we're not going to get any chapter next week. Week after that, we get a chapter, hopefully. It's, it's expected because, you know, it hasn't been that many breaks this year. I think it's been one so far this year, so this is the second one. We kind of expected it, and Oda, Oda has been knocking it out of the park lately, so we can't be too upset. We just got to enjoy it and bask in the ambience, right? Seeing white chicks. All right, anyways, I would say this chapter is probably it. 9 out of 10. I wouldn't say a 10 because it had some parts that was kind of, eh, okay, I get it. I mean, he had the Usopp part where he's jotting out notes because of too much legends. We had Brooke kind of being a troll. Not a troll, but he was kind of being annoying. Like, I wanted to find out more about, you know, Whitebeard and stuff. He was, like, kind of shifting the narrative towards, like, Crocus. Crocus is cool, but he's not Roger, Rayleigh, and Whitebeard. That was all right. But nah, let me know what you thought about this chapter again no chapter next week but we're gonna we're gonna get some theories out there and some discussions to kind of make up for it but yeah uh, let me know what you thought about the chapter like if you did subscribe to the channel if you haven't that'd be dope have a good day people